You wanna know how the rich keep on getting richer? Well, you better watch this whole video because they are doing what we're gonna be talking about. So we've talked a lot about day trading, prop firms, and options on this channel. Now let's get into the real stuff. I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the test. If you're not investing long-term, then you're messing up. I've had a long-term my entire trading career. I invest and now I've got a brand new $150,000 account fresh and ready to be managed. I'm talking about this. And I'm going to log into that account in real time for full transparency so you can see that it's in there. This video will serve as a beginner place marker of this account's journey, which I plan to document as time goes on. I'm gonna go over the strategies I'll be using to invest and how I'll allocate the money. We'll be going over stocks, options, using the wheel strategy, CDs, treasury bills, and which products I will be reviewing and selecting to invest in. This will be a great educational video for those that are new to investing and you wanna learn and get ideas about what kind of instruments and financial products that you can leverage your money in to generate returns. You wanna know how the rich keep on getting richer? Well, you better watch this whole video because they are doing what we're gonna be talking about. And don't stop until we get what we're owed. Now remember, this video is not financial advice. This is for educational purposes only, and you should always consult with a licensed financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Now I'm documenting potential investing strategies that I will be utilizing in the coming months as I begin to move this money around. The key points I'm gonna be going over in this video when I go to my screen share here in a second are general investing guidelines, utilizing options in the wheel strategy, CDs and T-bills as investment vehicles, how to pick your stocks, and portfolio management. Let's get into it. All right, this is gonna be a good one, guys. Financial board investing $150,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in to TD Ameritrade here, put my trusty fingerprint in, log in. And there we are, and you can see the account. And here, I'll come into view, reload page. No tricks, I deposited, fresh account, and we are going to have some fun with this. So there it is, I just wanted to be transparent and do a live login so you can see it for yourself. This is not a professional prospectus and layout. This is kind of like a color coded, easy to read, and that's the point for people that don't really understand this stuff yet or are new to it. We can kind of zoom in and hone in on like the general ideas and the guidelines and everything that we're gonna talk about. So let's get into it. So when it comes to investing, and again, this is 150,000 that I'm gonna be messing with, you can start at any point. You can start with $100, $1,000, $10,000, it does not matter. The whole point is to be investing long-term and you add in every month over time. So the main thing is when you come to your investment strategy, what matters is your objective, not the age. It doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're 18, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, it's your objective. Are you trying to generate a ton of returns fast? Are you trying to just make the account be worth more than it is in 10 years? You just wanna do low risk strategies. You need to define what your goals are. Why are you investing? Are you investing for retirement? Are you investing so you have money to buy a house? You have to understand what are your goals so that you can take this to your financial advisor and you can look at how you wanna maneuver things and move your money around based on your goals. All right, and your time horizon. Right, if you want to buy a house and you know you want to buy a house in the next couple of years, you might change up your investment strategy. You might not want to invest in like low risk, low yield stuff like CDs and treasury bills. You might want to invest in like growth names. For example, if you were to buy Tesla in 2020, uh, within two years, your money would have been up a ton. All right, if your time horizon is 10, 20, 30 years, then you can go for the lower risk stuff and just let it compound over time. What I'm going to be doing with this money is the wheel strategy. So I'm selling puts at prices that I'm comfortable purchasing at, and I'm selling call options during high IV rallies. Now I'm gonna go into this more in detail, but that's what I'm gonna be doing with this money. Now your short-term goals are gonna be those where you'll need the money within 12 months. Your medium-term goals are gonna be taking between one and five years to accomplish, and your long-term goals are gonna take more than five years to reach. So if you're investing for retirement, you're investing for dividends, all these things, you don't need the money in five years, and those will be your long-term goals. Like I said, if you need the money within 12 months, you're not gonna put the money into a two-year CD, for example, or a two-year treasury bill. You're gonna buy shorter dated things. You're gonna maybe use options or other strategies to get that money fast. Now, what I'm looking at allocating this into, and this is kind of ever-changing, but 30% into the SPY, 20% into the triple cure Apple, but Apple is a big 
part of the SPY, but I like Apple as a company. And if you own Apple, you pretty much own tech. Triple Q is a tech ETF. 10% into energy, 5% into maybe short-term treasuries, which is the TUA. And we're going to talk about this in a second. I'm actually going to be putting 100K into T-bills. When we get to the T-bill section, I will tell you why. 15% into dividend, common, common stock. Or just 30% into dividends like ExxonMobil, Fang Energy, BRKB. Um, actually, I'm not going to do IEP anymore. I kind of got smashed. I haven't changed this yet, so there you go. Uh, and then commons, which is common stocks. So just other companies, maybe Facebook, maybe Google, maybe uh, Boeing, Snapchat, Ford. And then 20% into CD or T-bills. I will be using CDs and T-bills uh, while it makes sense to do so, given rates. Now, let's do a quick little crash course on options. You may or may not know what options are. You may have heard of them before. You may be confused. So very, very simply put, all right, a call is bought. There's calls and puts, all right? A call is bought when you think the stock will go up, and a put is bought when you think the stock will fall. You buy an option call when you think the stock will go up. You buy an option put if you think you can go down. You can play both ways in the stock market. You can buy shares or you can short shares, all right? And most people buy long-term shares, but when the market goes down, you can also buy puts and capitalize on this down movement. So you can play both ways. You can hedge your long positions, uh, which is what some people do, is if a lot of firms, if they have $100 million in stock, they'll buy five or 10 million in puts. And if the stock goes down, they'll make money on that put and that'll offset the loss on the shares. You can also sell options, you can short options. So you can sell a call, sell a put, you buy and sell, buy and sell. You sell a call when you are bearish, all right? So if you are buying it, you think it's gonna go up. So the inverse of that is selling it, you think it's gonna go down. And if you're buying a put, you think it's gonna go down. And the inverse of that is if you are selling a put, you think it's gonna go up. Now you might be thinking, well, why wouldn't I just buy a call versus sell a put? We're gonna get into that. But the point is, for example, let me just get rid of this. When I am day trading, I don't sell options at all. I just buy calls and buy puts. If I think the stock is gonna go up, I'm buying a call. If I think the stock is gonna go down, I'm buying a put. If the stock drops, I ex exit my, my put, I sell it back and I gain the profit. If the stock goes up and I'm in a call, I exit my position and I take the profit. When you're selling, it's a little different and it matters most when we're investing, that's why we're gonna talk about it. And an option controls 100 shares of stock, so you must have buying power for 100 shares per one options contract sold. If you're gonna sell a stock that costs $100, 100 times 100 is 10,000. So you need to have $10,000 to sell one option of a $100 stock. Now, you might be a little confused with options, and they are confusing in the beginning, but I promise if you spend just a little bit of time, a few months, just like spending time on it, it snaps and it makes more sense. You gotta be utilizing options. You gotta be using these investment strategies because putting it into a savings account is not gonna generate returns. And the main point I'm trying to convey is that if you and I started with the same amount of money, if we both put 10,000 into an account and started trading on the same day, and you just put it in there and forgot about it, and I started selling options and utilizing those other vehicles in five years, let's say, at the end of that, my account's gonna be greater than yours. In fact, I'm gonna be considerably more up than you are because you just put your money and forgot about it and I took advantage of the products in the market that you can trade. This is what the rich people are doing. And I've told people in the past to invest and oh, you know, do options, do this, treasury bills, and they go, I, I don't wanna do that, I don't know. And that's a key inflection point in why you can't get ahead. It's because they would rather go, oh, that sounds complicated. I'm gonna have to spend time learning that. I don't wanna do it, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna put it in a CD. I'm just gonna put it in my savings account. That willingness to give up and not go the extra step to just learn a new skill is how you're not gonna get ahead. It, it, it doesn't take that much effort to, to learn these things. You have to put some time in, talk to financial advisor, get some competency. You gotta have financial literacy. You can be someone that complains that the rich keep on getting richer and that you can't get ahead, or you can figure out how to take advantage of the system. And it's not even taking advantage of it, it's just using what's available to you. Anyone can trade options, it's available to you. You can generate money, you can, you can buy bonds and treasury bills, you can do all these things. It's not illegal, it's available to you. And all the richest people and all the people that understand money understand this and they utilize what's available to them. And they go out and find it. And you're only gonna figure it out if you're out there looking and learning. All right. Back to the lesson. The reason we're using options is the short-term goals are to generate monthly to bi-monthly income. The medium-term goals are to raise capital and holdings to reinvest. 
and the long-term goals are to generate alpha year over year. Alpha is if the market goes up 8% this year, like the market index hold S&P 500 is up 8%. If your portfolio is up 10%, you have a 2% alpha. Alpha is beating the benchmark index. That's all that means. So as we just talked about, the rich are using options and people with financial literacy take advantage of options to generate more money on their positions. So let's talk about that a little more. Before we get into that, because you're selling options on stocks that you're going to be choosing, these are some names of stocks that I might be looking at potentially investing in and allocating into. ExxonMobil Energy, these are the dividend yields. All right, The higher the yield, the more dividend it pays per quarter, and like technically the riskier it can be. Um, like Apple has a very low yield compared to Ford, which has a 5% yield. Fang, which is energy, 7.2% yield. BRKB, that's Warren Buffett's financials, no dividend, but a solid company, a solid, uh, but a solid stock. Ford, IRM, which is a REIT, real estate investment trust. I actually have IRM in one of my other, one of my other accounts that I bought in 2020. That position on the shares is up like 70%. It's been my, one of my better ones. Procter & Gamble, Consumer Staples, they make like toothpaste and all that kind of stuff. UNH, United Healthcare, Boeing, Caterpillar, Vanguard, the list goes on. There's like over 4,000 stocks to invest in. What you want to invest in is companies that you know and that you use, is that you know and use will be here. What you want to invest in is companies that you know and that you use that will be here 10 years from now. We're going to talk about that also in a little bit. And also dividend yields change. So this is at the time of this video. It goes up and down depending on if companies issue higher dividends or lower dividends. So the wheel strategy, the Warren Buffett special. This is what Warren Buffett does. This is what institutions do. This is how people take their money and make it into more money. By selling cash secured puts, you are effectively choosing a price on the stock or ETF that is lower. You choose a price that you are comfortable owning it at. So if the stock is trading at $150 and you go, I don't want to buy it at $150, I'd rather buy it at $140. You would use sell a put option at $140 and you collect a dollar amount by selling you collect the money. So let's say the option on that stock cost $200. You sell it and collect $200. So you sell the option, someone out there in the marketplace, whoever it is, the, um, the OCC, the Options Clearing Corps, routes the orders, uh, they pay you $200, you sell them the option, and you say, hey, I don't think this stock is, I think this stock is going to stay above 140 and I'm going to sell this option and collect $200 from you, and if it stays above 140 I keep the 200 and, and if it goes under 140 I buy it at 140 so if the stock does not hit 140, you keep the $200. That's it. If the stock, there's an expiration date on an option. So you sell an option one month out. So I'm, I'll type that in here too. There's every week there's an option that expires. You can go one week out, three weeks out, five weeks out, six months out, two years out. So let's say it expires in 30 days. At the end of 30 days, if the stock does not hit $140, you keep the 200. You never bought the stock and you made $200. You keep the 200 still, and then you buy 100 shares at 140. So cash secured means 140 times 100 would be 14,000. Cash secured puts means when you're in that option, you have to have $14,000 in your account. If it's if it's a $140 stock, you have to have 14,000 in your account in order to sell that option. Otherwise, you can't do it. And you can't use that 14,000 during that 30 days. And you can close this option at any time too. Like let's say you're up $100 and 15 days in, you can close out in 15 days and collect $100 and be back to flat and have no positions open. The reason it's a no lose is because you're getting paid to buy a stock at a cheaper price that you wanted to buy it to anyway. And the reason it's, well that sounds too good to be true, it's not, it's just what it is. And the reason you win at this is because you pick a price you're okay with owning it at. All right, maybe it's, you don't, I don't want to own it at 140, I want to own it at 130. And maybe the option only costs $100. So you could sell it, you can make $100 and it probably won't hit 130 and you keep the 100. And if it does hit 130, you buy it at 130 anyway. You're getting paid money to buy a stock at a cheaper price on a stock you're going to buy anyway and that you want to own. So if you don't want to own the stock, you don't sell an option on it. It's very simple. So you say, hey, I definitely know I want to buy Boeing. Boeing is like a $230 stock right now. I definitely know I want to buy Boeing, 
but I'd rather buy Boeing at 210, 215. So I'm gonna sell an option, collect 100 bucks, and then if it doesn't hit 215, and you can just keep doing this over and over and over again, repeat selling puts and collect money until you eventually purchase it at your lower price. All right, so you might do this for three months, four months, five months, because the market's always going up and down. The stock's 150. You end up buying the stock at 130, and you've made $800, and you got to buy it $20 cheaper. So this is how if we start with the same amount of money in our account and you're not utilizing options, I'm going to have more money in my account at the end of the day. Now, it's called the wheel because once you are in the stock, let's say it goes and you get put in the stock and now you own the stock at whatever price. Let's say you own the stock at 150 You can sell a covered call. And a covered call is you're effectively choosing a price on the stock or ETF that is higher than where you own it and you choose a price you think the stock will not rise to. Now, if you don't know how to find levels on the charts and all these things, number one, you gotta get in the full-time trader course, the course that we offer, which goes into all the trading strategies, but there's tons of free options out there, and of course, consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decisions. So if the stock is trading at 150, and let's say you own the stock at 150, but you go, I don't think it's gonna go past 170, so you sell a call option at 170, 30 days out, and, and again, whatever, time frame you want and you collect the dollar amount by selling you collect the money so if the call costs 150 let's say you sell it and you collect 150 and let's say there's 30 days till expiry again if the stock does not go to 170 you keep the 150 dollars win so you already own the stock at 150 let's say it's gone up to 155 after 30 days so you're up five dollars in the shares and now you made another 150 dollars now you can buy another now you got one free share of stock just for selling an option on a stock you already own. And that's how you put money to work for you. you. You take shares you already own and you took a synthetic dividend and you get paid to own it. You own the stock and you make money to own it and it's like renting out your stock. Now, if the stock does go to 170, and again, like I said, you can close the option out at any time, you can roll it, which means, let's say it's been 28 days and the stock is at 168 and you go, oh, I have two days left, it's gonna go to 170, you can roll the call and you can go another 30 days out and then exit the position that expires in two days, roll the call out and then open one up that expires 30 days from now and then you can collect the premium again and you can keep doing that. And you have to sell, you, it's covered calls because you're, you're covering the call with your shares. So you own 100 shares, you're gonna have to sell your stock at 170 if the call expires in the money, if the, which means it expires at 170, the price you picked. So you automatically would keep the 150 and you'd have to sell at 170, but you bought it at 150, 20 times, you're up $20 times 100, you'd be up $2,000. But if you bought it at 150, sold it at 170 without an option, you make 2,000. I sell an option, buy it at 150, sell it at 170, I'm up 2150. And it, as soon as this happens, it'll be on a Friday, you can literally just go, let's say you have to sell the, your shares at 170, you can literally come back and buy them at 170 if you want to. It's just taxes and capital gains and all that. So I would say always try and roll the position and keep yourself in the shares. And I like to go about a good rule of thumb is, and I'm just going to put a text box in here, um, sell a call about 30% higher so and you might not make 150 like sometimes depending on your stock it could be forty dollars or twenty dollars or eighty dollars or nine dollars depending on how expensive the stock is but you want to sell a call about thirty percent higher than what your um, position is so if it's a hundred dollar stock you'd want to sell the 130 call because a 30% move, especially on names like Apple, Google, like these big these big stocks, they're not gonna go up 30% in a month. It's just their their market cap is too high. All right. Some some gross stock like GameStop, Tesla will do 15% in one day. You're collecting less money, but the probability of you having to get out of your stock is a lot less, and the probability of you keeping the the money that you collected is much higher. And you, and you can do this for the lifetime of your stock and you can repeat selling calls and collect money during high IV rallies and roll as needed. So when like the IV is the implied volatility, it just it makes options prices go up. So when we have these really, really big rallies, the calls get really expensive. So when you sell the calls, you're collecting more money. I, I, I hope it's not confusing. Let's say you wanna buy 100 shares of Apple at 190, it's $19,000 to do that. 
So you sell a put at 180 for $200 one month out. If Apple stays above 180, you keep the 200, and now you have $19,200. If Apple goes underneath 180, you keep the 200 still, and you spend 18,000 buying 100 shares of Apple at 180. You have $18,200. Well, you really have $19,200, and you spent 18,000. Now you have $1,200 left over. I'll put that right. $1,200 left over. Now you can buy an extra six shares of Apple. And then the downside is if like at the end of one month, Apple goes to 175, you'd still have to buy it. You, you would, if it, if it went to 175, you would have to buy at 180 because that's the strike that you pick. You pick the 180 option, you have to buy it at 180. So if the stock's at 175, you still have to buy it at 180. But you made the $200. You made the $200. Five times 100 would be 500. So you're really only down $300 on the position. But if you bought it at 180 without selling the option and it went to 175, you'd still be down 500. But now you're only down 300 because you've gained that money. So again, it just generates more money. And if you are confused, I'm really sorry, but you got to just go learn options. There's a lot of free sources out there. And again, I go over I have a bunch of modules, an entire options section inside my course that explains it in detail, teaches you how to trade them, and all that jazz. But at the very least, get some financial literacy and learn options. Because if you can see anything, when you own shares and you use options, you're just making more money. CDs are very common. You've probably heard of them. Banks offer them a certificate of deposits. CDs are low-risk ways to set aside cash but still earn a very modest rate of return. Most banks offer CDs around 3% to 5% APY in their interest rates. This varies, of course. And we are going to do generally a 20% allocation rolled each year into a 12-month CD. So depending on rates, each year I might do a 12-month uh, or a 6-month CD. It's about twelve fifty a year at, at, I think, 4%, 5% on a 20% allocation of this 150 k That's changing because treasury bills. Now... Treasury bills, people probably don't understand. You have treasury bills, you have treasury notes, uh, kind of like a bond. T-bills offer a low-risk way to generate returns at a modest rate. It's backed by the U.S. economy. So as long as the United States government and the economy doesn't fail, your, your treasury bills are fine. And if the government and the economy does fail, you, your money doesn't matter anyway because you're going to have to take a gun to go to the grocery store because it's going to be Armageddon end of the world. All right, so it won't matter. your money doesn't matter anyway. And then you have the discount rate, and it rolls every three to six months or one year based on the rate. Now, treasury bills are shorter term, T-bills are shorter term. You have notes, you have bonds, right, depending on the length. So T-bills, kind of confusing, and I'm not going to do an education in this video on them. I'm going to be parking 100000 though, in treasury bills. And the difference is, is a CD is you have to do six months, 12 months. Treasury bills, you can do three months. You can do 13 week. You come here to the department treasury bill rates and you can see 13 weeks right now, it's making this video in August, are 5.27%. And the Fed just rates interest rates. Uh, actually, yesterday, uh, what Fitch came out and they lowered the credit rating. And so, but when they did that in 2011, the two years didn't really move that much. But I'm locked in at 5.27%, so I can get in a 13-week. Now, in the end of 13 weeks, if this is higher, I can get in at a higher rate and put that into a higher interest rate T-bill. But if I get in at this rate on like a six-month CD, I'm locked in for six months. And then, of course, it can go up or down. But I like T-bills right now because the market's at a very precarious point in terms of it's due for a pullback. In fact, it had a pretty big down day on the credit rating change. So I want to park 100000 in a treasury bill for the next three weeks, and I'm probably just going to sell puts with the remaining 50000 And then in three months, I can assess the market. If I think there's a buying opportunity, I can start allocating into these stocks. And if the treasury bill rates are higher, like let's say they're at 6% or more, then I'll just put another 100 k in the profit that I've made into a higher percent yield, and then I'll... I'll allocate, I'll start maneuvering the money in 2024. So right now it's just the safest thing to do with CDs and treasury bills 
because the market just had a huge rally and the interest rates are high so you can take advantage of it. And like institutions and banks and rich people are buying treasury bills in like the millions of dollars, all right? I mean, they're, they're doing it at a, at a very, very in, you know, incredible rate than I am, like a way bigger, bigger chunk. And again, it's okay if you have $10,000, it's fine. You're not gonna make, you're not gonna make 5% in your savings account. So treasury bills, if you don't know what they are and you're confused, go research them. Talk to a financial advisor and ask them what they think about T-bills or CDs, make, make your decisions, but get financial literacy. This whole video is to give you ideas because you might have came, come into this video not knowing about CDs or knowing about CDs but not knowing about treasury bills, not hearing it, and you might think, I'm just going to do a CD. And there, there could be a lot more benefits to doing a treasury bill. And if you're stubborn, you say, I don't care. I'm just going to do a CD. I'm just leaving it in my savings account. It's stupid. All right? Talk to people with financial literacy. Talk to people. Talk to financial advisors. Research these things and see what you can do. And this, like I said, this video is to give you creative ideas. So if you don't know what a treasury bill is, you can get the light bulb and you can go look it up. You can go look up what a treasury bill is and, and maybe utilize them. And you go, oh, hey, I didn't know what a treasury bill was. This is really great. I want to use this now. I'm going to see uh, about buying treasury bills and put my money to work for me. You're welcome. So it's time to buy some treasury bills. And to do that, you can research and ideas, bonds and CDs, new issues. This is all the CDs and... A lot of the stuff that you can trade, I'm not going to worry about any of it, but come here to Treasury Auctions. And because it's Thursday, I'm going to do the, uh, the announcement on Thursday. Like we talked about in the plan, I'm going to put it in this, and then when this matures, we'll look at the rates in three months and decide if I want to go back into a Treasury bill, move it into a CD, or depending on where the market is, do less and do a CD and a T bill, and then maybe start doing some selling options on selling puts on stocks I want to buy and positioning into long term shares. So they're in quantities of a thousand, so I'm going to go ahead and buy 103 of them. This will be $103,000. Just going to put an extra 3000 in. The rates are nice, nice and high, and then that'll give me 47000 left over that I can look at selling options with and see how I want to position it because I like where rates are right now. There's the QSIP and then we'll go ahead. Settlement will be on the 10th. The maturity is November 9th. So this is when the principal amount of it's going to become due and payable. So and then T-bills are sold like at a discount rate. So it's actually going to show less in my account. So like if it was 100,000, my account would show, let's say I'm going to make 2,000 on it. Just random number. The account would show like ninety eight thousand, and then as it got closer to November 9th, the account would increase each time by the rate until it was a hundred thousand. And then after August, like after November 9th, I'd have like a hundred and two thousand in my account. It's kind of confusing. Um, this video is not so much to do a full walkthrough on how treasury bills work. It's just showing you how you buy them, and basic info, and then I would implore you again to do further research um, and speak with financial advisors and look into it more to see how to operate that. But I'm gonna go ahead and place that trade, and now it's a pending order. Now I'm on this chart, and I've, I made a couple changes. I'm doing 100. There's the QSIP, and if you come to this chart, there's the same QSIP. This is just treasury bill. That's the face value, 98.56. So times this by 100, so essentially, I'm going to make about fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars on this investment in three months um, and I'll get filled. This is Thursday uh, it's on what Monday is this is the announcement date Monday's the auction and then I'll be filled by Wednesday and then it matures November 9th. Not um, a huge huge investment gain. The point of that is we're at a massive market rally. We can totally go up here to highs. But we are due for a pullback, and I'd like to see the market come back down to like the 440 range, even 429. And in three months, ideally, I'll have the gains from the T-bill, and I'd like to see the market lower, and then I can take that 100,000 and start maneuvering it into the stocks we're talking about. And I'm gonna be using the remaining 50,000 to sell puts 
on the spy and other stocks. So that's the reason behind it. That's why I'm doing a T-bill. Uh, I'm not trying to make a bunch of money right now. I have so much time to trade this account. I just want to grow it slowly and accurately. And because of the rates are high, I'm doing the T-bill. That's the reason behind the trade. That's kind of what I'm looking at. Rates are going up. They could continue to go up. And I still have 50K to mess with. And I will move that 100,000 into the market when I see fit. And right now, I don't see it as being fit. If I were to have put that in back in October, that would have been great, but we're right here. So that's what I'm doing. That's my thought process. Back to the video. So the main thing when selecting stocks to invest in is you select stocks, you choose major companies that you know and that you use that will be around in 10 years. Apple, Microsoft, JP Morgan, Google, uh, Boeing, right? Uh, girls ask me all the time, I don't know what stock to invest in. I go, well, do you, uh, do you wear makeup? Yeah, of course. Do you like Alta? I love Alta. I shop at Alta every week. Cool. Buy Alta stock. It's on the stock market. Uh, buy companies that you know and that you use. Are you the Are you a rabid Nike fan? Buy Nike. Do you eat at McDonald's every day? You shouldn't. I don't. I haven't eaten McDonald's in years. But do you eat at McDonald's every day? Buy McDonald's stock. It's very simple. Buy companies you know and that you use. Products that you own. If you don't like Apple and you buy Windows, buy Microsoft. Buy both. If I'm a big Apple guy, obviously on my Mac. If you are a huge Apple guy and you use Apple product, buy Apple. If you like Tesla, buy Tesla. Amazon. Uh, buy companies you know and that you use. It's best to diversify so you're not too overexposed to one company or one sector. So you shouldn't put all your money into just tech. That's why I have allocated energy, financials, healthcare, industrials. You kind of move the money around a different sector because they go up and down differently. And if you're all in tech. If the NASDAQ starts selling off and tech has a really bad year, then your money's going to be down. And allocate between growth stocks and dividend-paying stocks. Dividend-paying stocks like the ones above. Growth would be something like Tesla, Palantir, Snapchat. Tesla was a $400 stock in April 2020, or yeah, April 2020, and by the end of the year, it was like a $2,000 stock. So that's a growth stock. A little more risky, and you can turn on DRIP, which is Dividend Reinvestment Plan. So every quarter you get paid a dividend, it'll automatically invest your dividends back into stock and buy fractional shares. So you can get, you know, you, you buy IRM, and then you own 100 shares of IRM, and then you get your dividend, and then it automatically buys 1.7 shares of IRM. So now you have 101.7, for example. And then another thing I want to add in here that I didn't put on, um, that I didn't put in here, but the best thing to do would be to have a monthly deposit into your account. If you can, you should. And basically this can be anything, again, depending on your financial situation, it can be $50. But if you are putting $50, $100 every month into your investment account and then buying more stock, this is how you compound interest. So it doesn't matter whether it's whether it's up or down. You can buy it at any point. The market's always going up, which we're going to talk about in a second. But if the market's selling off, you just add in your money and you buy more shares. And it's fun. You put in $100 every month, and then you buy one more share of Google. You buy uh, 10 more shares of Ford, et cetera, et cetera. And you do that each month, and this is how you really get your money to work for you and compound over time. This is a massive, massive point. Pay attention here. This is so huge. What I'm about to talk about, this, this one sentence is everything, all right? When managing a portfolio, if you're managing it, you do not move the money around unless you know where it's going, all right? Now, for some of you, a long term, you, just, you buy the stock and you never sell it. You hold it for the next 10 years, no matter what. COVID, you don't sell it, all right? If aliens invade and start laying haymakers to cities and Miami and New York, Indianapolis are no longer on the map because aliens have have blown them up, you do not sell, okay? It's a long-term chair. You put your money in your long-term chair and you sit in your chair and you do not get up, all right? You, and if you're managing it, this means that you do not move it around unless you know where it is going. What do I mean? I mean that if COVID is happening and the market is selling off, you don't get scared and go, oh, I'm going to sell my positions because I don't want to lose any more money and then put it in cash. You do not do that. What I'm talking about is, for example, I have $100,000 in treasury bills and in 13 weeks they're going to mature and I'm going to get that money out. All right? I'm not going to sell that, but 
I get that money out, and then now I'm gonna go, okay, I'm gonna allocate this into something else, all right? Let's say I'm in, you're, let's say you're actively managing it and you're in energy, all right? You have energy stocks, and energy is really looking like you think energy is gonna, it had a great run, had a, a massive year, and you go, I don't wanna be overexposed in energy. I don't wanna own as much energy stocks as I own because I'm up big and I think it's gonna come back down. We're entering this season and I wanna put this money into a better vessel. Maybe I wanna put that money and take the gains from my energy stocks and put that into a certificate of deposit and lock it in. You know where it's going, right? You, you go, I'm going to sell this much in my energy stocks and then move that money immediately into a CD. That's why you sell. You don't go, oh my God, energy is selling off. I'm gonna sell it and get out and then I'm gonna figure it out later. That's stupid, all right? That's not how you manage your money. You never go cash f without a specific reason. You don't go cash because you're scared. You, you never, like I said, aliens invade. You're gonna go, oh God, you're gonna be sitting there from your window watching aliens shoot everything going, oh, that's crazy, look at that, without selling. You're gonna be sitting there looking at your account in one hand going, oh, my stocks are going down, that's crazy. And then you're gonna be watching aliens invade. You know, like I'm, I'm being comical, but I'm just making the point. You do not sell ever unless you know where it's going. And this is why. Here is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, all right? The market is always going up. Pretty much since the 1929 stock crash, it's always going up. No matter how bad it gets, 2009 financial crisis, COVID, it doesn't, the market's always, always going up, all right? And I, I remember looking at it. This was... 2007 or 8 before the 08 crisis if you bought at the all-time highs in 08 or 07 whatever it was 09 if you bought at the all-time highs and you didn't sell and you didn't add through all this i think it was 2010 right 20 2009 by 2017 2018 you would have been up 50 percent on your investment if you bought the spy the s p 500 you would have been up 50% on your money if you didn't sell through all this. So everyone's freaking out. It's the end of the times. You just held it for eight years, nine, 10 years, you're up 50%. And if you added during this, you would have been up 50% sooner, 100% within three, four years. This is the biggest thing with investing is people don't understand is because you're watching it every day go down and down and down and down. And this is why if you are putting your monthly deposit into your account, as it's going down and down and down, you're simply just buying more each month, getting a better cost average, getting a better cost average, getting a better cost average, and then it, boom, it goes up. COVID was like a blip too. You go look at the COVID chart. COVID looks like, uh, kind of like this. This is how COVID looked on a, on, a, on a trading chart now. It went down and then really fast and then boom, it's like just been explosive. You never get, investing is investing. You're in it for the long haul. No matter what happens, all right, the market is always going up. The recovery time can vary, but if you're adding in and you have dividend paying stocks, so you, dividends are cash into your account, they pay you money. And you can turn dividend, you can turn drip off, you can turn drip off after eight, nine, 10 years and live off of dividends. This is what some people do. Like someone makes $100,000, this is obviously after a lot of money, but people are making seventy, eighty thousand dollars in dividends a year, and they just live off of their dividends. How do the rich have money? How do people not work? Well, they're making eighty thousand a year on dividends and other investment vehicles that I don't even know about. Keep that in mind. That's the biggest thing. Uh, the best way I can explain it. You're right. In human innovation always trumps fear. These are all the lists of like all the um, financial, like nineteen twenty nine financial panic. These are all the crises that have happened, all the downturns. All right, and it has the numbers next to it. Financial crisis, uh, the stock market depression. That was number thirty four. All right, one hundred and twelve would be oh yeah subprime mortgage credit credit debacle was oh seven. Yeah, 08 was the credit crisis, financial institution failures. That was number 113 right there. So if you bought it at 112, for example, 2015 terror attack. So yeah, if you bought in 09, 08, and you held it for six years, you're up like 50% on your investment. Best way I can explain it to you, no matter what happens, when you're, when you're trading long-term shares, you don't sell. You saw COVID. That was recent. Uh, if you're younger... Everyone watching this video saw COVID happen in real time. You saw the markets drop very fast, and you saw the markets recover 
faster and explosive. And I mean, Apple, Microsoft hit all time highs and so did Apple like ever uh, last month in 2023 here, ever. When you're investing, when you're managing, you know, you're always long the market, selling your options in between and doing all these little tactics. That's how you can turn your money into more. And I'll update this as time goes on and, you know, keep following the YouTube channel. I'm going to be continuing my financial journey in day trading and investing. I hope you learned something new and let me know if you've gotten this far. Thank you. Let me know in the comments what your investing strategies are. Maybe you know something I don't. Maybe you're a more savvy investor than I am. You know, I want to get into funds eventually. Like, let me know like other stuff that you have found success in that you think is better. We're all here to learn. If you know something I don't, post and put in the comments so other people can learn. Everyone's here to learn. We all want to get better. Let us know what you're doing. Let us let me know what you think about this. If there's something that you think I could do better, I could tighten up. If you've learned a lot, let me know in the comments if anything. You know, take this with a grain of salt. Anything that you don't understand, you know, this is a very intro basic guideline level. Definitely go deeper down the rabbit hole, talk to financial advisors, look at other sources on how you can invest your money. But the point is you got to have your money working for you because it's not doing anything in a savings account.